Hey there, Polycasters. Rob here. Welcome back to the show. Uh, as we've been working on Polymer, one of the probably biggest requests that comes in from developers is, when are we going to get a CDN for Polymer and for web components? Because it's kind of a pain in the butt every time you want to sort of like hack on an idea and you've got to use Bower and install a bunch of packages and wait for everything to download just so you can, you know, play with stuff. So recently, the Polymer team has put out a brand new project, which is called PolyGit. It is a development CDN, which I'll, I'll talk about what that word means uh, in just a second. Uh, but basically, it is a CDN that includes Polymer, all the Polymer elements, and the Web Components polyfill. So if you want to hack around using something like JSBin and Polymer, you can totally do that. So if you go to the website polygit.org, you see that it bills itself as the Polymer Magic Server. And what it's actually doing under the hood is it's just using GitHub's raw Git CDN and extracting things from there and pulling them into you know, JS bin or, or wherever you want to use the CDN. So what I want to do here is just sort of like show you some examples of how you can use the CDN, how you can configure it to actually pull in your own packages as well, and, uh, and basically just get hacking really quick. So uh, over on JSBin.com, I've already set up this little sample bin. And the main thing to notice here is I'm using this base tag right here. And if you're not familiar with a base tag, uh, in HTML, a base tag or a base element, it just allows you to set a URL and then any sort of subsequent URLs that you use, like for script tags or imports, they will all be relative to that base. So what we're saying here is we want the base URL to be polygit.org slash components. This components directory is where Polymer and all the Polymer elements and all that good stuff lives. And from here on out, if we have any relative URLs, it'll just pull stuff from, from that directory. So I'm pulling in web components JS. It's coming from that directory. I can import polymer.html. That'll also come from that directory. And so since we've got all this working off of our CDN, now we can actually sit here if we want. And we can just create our own Polymer element right on JSBin. So I'm going to do that right out of DOM module here. I'll give it an ID of like x foo, And I'll give it a template that just says, like, hello from xfoo. And I'll also give it a little script tag. And inside of here, we will call the Polymer constructor. And we're going to say it is an xfoo element. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to just make sure that we use our xfoo tag somewhere in the page. And now you can see it showing up over there in our output. So this is really great if you're you know, hanging out on the Polymer Slack channel, you, you run into a bug or some issue, and you're not quite sure how to explain it to folks. You can just go throw together a JS bin using PolyGit and then share that JS bin with people so they can help you get unstuck. Now, I also mentioned that all the Polymer elements that we built are included in this CDN as well. So what you can also do if you find maybe a, a bug or an issue with something like paper tabs is you can go over here and you can just write an HTML import for paper tabs. So instead of just Polymer. I'll also pull in paper tabs. And then you can just start using that element in your page here. So I'll say I want a set of paper tabs. And then inside of here, I will write out maybe like two or three paper tabs. So we'll say this first tab is called foo. Second one is going to be called bar. And the last one will be baz. Foo bar baz. And there we go. Now over here in our output, I've got these three paper tabs working just as I was expecting. And you know, if I had some issue, I could then take this. I could save this JS bin. I could go file a GitHub issue and, and point the engineer at this particular JS bin. And that way, it's going to help them triage that issue a lot faster and help them debug the actual uh, problem that you're running into and hopefully get things fixed. Now, one of the coolest things about PolyGit is that it is configurable. So not only uh, does it pull in Polymer and the elements that that team has created, but you can add your own GitHub repos to it as well. So if you go back to the polygit.org website, you scroll down here to the bottom, you can see that there is this sort of uh, interesting configuration syntax. And it might look a little weird when you first see it. It took me a few times kind of working through it to understand what it's doing. Uh, but basically, what you want to do is when you are defining that base URL, you can configure it by saying, oh, I would also like to include this component. And this component might live like inside of some particular org. And maybe you want a particular version, like version 1.2.3. Or maybe you want a branch, right? Maybe you want like the, the master branch. That's some good handwriting right there. Uh, or maybe you want just the, the latest tag. So if you include an asterisk, instead of pulling a particular version or a branch, it'll just give you whatever the latest tag happens to be. So to show you an example of that, I've uh, again got a little JS bin here. 
And I'm just going to paste in a better URL here. So what I've done is I've configured polyGit to pull in two additional dependencies. Uh, the first is the marked markdown JS library, which is in the chjj org on GitHub. And I've told it to grab the latest tag. And I've also told it to pull in the mark dash down element, which is something that I wrote myself. That lives in the Rob Dodson org on GitHub. And again, I've just told it to pull in the latest tag there. So now both of those are available in that CDN components directory. So I can just go ahead and write an HTML import to pull in the markdown element. And then over in my body, I can just start using it. So I can have a markdown tag. And we'll just drop in like a hello world for the header there. And we can see we're getting this sort of like huge H1 rendering over there in the output. So if you're working on an element or a project or something like that, and you want to show that to folks on JSBin, you can absolutely do that uh, using PolyGit as well. Uh, the one caveat there is that it has to have been published for at least one hour for it to be picked up by the raw Git uh, caching CDN. Um, but once it's been published for about an hour, it should be available to you on PolyGit. Now, the, the last thing I want to mention here is at the very beginning of the show, we said that this is a sort of development time CDN. And what I mean by that is it's not a CDN that you want to use for production. And the reason is because we're not doing any sort of like vulcanization or anything like that uh, to optimize the elements that we're sending down. Instead, you're getting an individual dependency for everything that you import, which is actually pretty expensive in terms of HTTP requests. So it's great for uh, development time. It's great for hacking on ideas. But when you get to the point where you want to launch something into production, you still want to use a package manager like Bower. You still want to use a process like Vulcanize to make sure uh, you're sending down the absolute smallest payload possible. But you know, if, you, if you just want to mess around with some ideas, it's perfect for that. So that about covers it for today. If you have any questions, please leave them for me down in the comments. Uh, or you can always hit me up on a social network of your choosing at hashtag AskPolymer. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>